So you all know that I love the game 60 Seconds. It's one of my favorite series that I've ever done on the channel. But did you know that this game has an ugly step cousin called 60 Parsecs? It's a game that's just like 60 Seconds, but it's taking place in space. I feel like I want to try this game again in 2023 and see if maybe I just overlooked it the first time. We are going to jump into this and see what it's all about. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. And a little fun fact, I actually thought that this was Dolores because not only is her name Dee Dee. She looks like she aged a few years because maybe she saw her family get killed in the explosion in the blast and now she decided she wants to fight asteroids. Like really punch it in the face and show it who's boss. Grab whatever and whoever you can. You got 60 seconds. Okay, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's move it, Dee Dee. Okay, okay, okay. Phone. More soup. What about water? I don't think that we need water, huh? I guess in 60 parsecs, we don't believe in water or something. Because I don't see it anywhere on the space station. But maybe I'm missing something. Maybe, like, we don't actually have to drink water in 60 parsecs. Because maybe they do it automatically. But let me get this bozo. Oh, shit. Hold on. Throw this down there. Grab this dude. Wait, what? Oh, I already have all the crew members I can carry. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's get that thing. That cow statue with those big-ass udders. And what else am I missing? Get that. Run, 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 run! Got him! Yeah! Woo! All right. First time replaying this game in 2023. I will say that the animations look smooth. So these are the crew members. April, Dee Dee, Emmett, and Baby Bronco. So it says, hello there. Astro computerized assistant reporting for duty. You must be Dee Dee, right? I am pleased to announce that due to your actions during the escape, you are the perfect candidate to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen Program, please accept our apologies for the negligible misfortune of being hurled 60 parsecs away from Earth. Recommended course of action, find a safe place to land, and then try to contact the outside world. Please power up the main computer for further instructions. It is located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your crew. Take it away, Captain. Captain. All Astro Citizen missions begin with Commanding Officer delivering a morale-boosting speech. Don't let me stop you. Everyone is really looking forward to your speech, Captain, so am I. This is it. You can really show what breed of Captain will you be in this incredible journey. What kind of speech will you give? Will I give an agility speech? Will I give an intelligent speech? <laughs> or will I give a strength speech? I don't think that Dee Dee's the type that has a lot of intelligence or strength. So I'm just going to go agility and let's see what happens. Is that it? That's not all I do. Okay. So this is just the computer. It's not like 60 seconds where you read the book and you do everything from there. I just go on the computer. Bada bing, bada boom. And then... Um, what's the sock puppet? I give somebody a turn with the sock puppet? Why the hell would I do that? I'm not gonna give anybody soup right now. And hopefully the five soup rule still applies to this game. Elaborating on the survival against all odds angle would have been quite a choice for a speech. Unfortunately, you decided to waffle on about how you miss waffles and a few other problems of an existential nature. As far as speeches go, it was the worst one in this part of the universe. Fuck, your crew seems to be in agreement about this. Congratulations, Captain. It's day one, and you have already succeeded in bringing your people together. Let's go! Against a common foe, no less. So they all got together and agreed that I'm stupid as shit balls. At least we're all together, right? Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crew well-fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. Even one could be the difference between life and death. Don't forget to keep good inventory of your stock, unless you want to eat your own crewmates. Who will perform the routine supply check? So who's the smarty pants over here? <laughs> Emmett is... Um, I'm assuming that it's Emmett. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be. Baby Bronco seems like, you know, the muscle here. Yeah. And April seems like the one that takes care of all of the mechanics. So Emmett, I am going to choose you, buddy. Good news, Captain. This shuttle came pre-stocked with an emergency food supply. Use it well. So we got one suit. Since Emmett did a good job, I think it's only fair to nominate him as your payload officer. In this role, Emmett will produce some minerals for you daily, as long as he respects you as captain anyway. I don't think that I have anybody's respect. I don't even respect myself. Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin has been activated. It's pretty self-explanatory. This modern machine lets you create and destroy. In accordance with the 
principle of mass conservation. All you need is a little bit of minerals, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as upgrade items and shuttle systems. So, are you talking about this thing? Okay. Well, uh, what the heck? So, I can upgrade items that I already have, which is good. Let me upgrade my first aid kit, I guess. This is why I was kind of drawn away from 60 parsecs because in comparison to 60 seconds, this was a little overwhelming because there's so many things that you can do. I feel like it was really simple in the first game, but I'm really trying to like give it a fair shot this time, but I feel like so many things are happening right now. Captain, I told you I activated the crafting system in the back of the shuttle. I recommend utilizing the machine. Didn't I just do that? Upgrade complete, new item available, modern first aid kit. What happened with the old school run of the mill type of med kit? I don't understand. But well, let me upgrade my phone thing. Where's my phone? Let me upgrade the phone so we can make phone calls. The shuttle sounds a bit rickety, Captain. A fan above the terminal is making a clicking sound, and there's a big cable knot behind one of the panels. I recommend a touch of spring cleaning. We don't have a ladder, so balance on one of the chairs and check behind the fan. Alternatively, you could try to untie the knot on the cable. So we have... Actually, we have an equal amount of agility or we have an equal amount of intelligence. I think if you're gonna go out into space and deal with shit like that, you need to have intelligence rather than agility. So I'm gonna give everybody soup now, because I think that it's the appropriate day to give everybody soup. Because I know that in 60 seconds, we gave it to them on day five. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? I think we gotta go with our payload officer, Emmett, because Emmett is the best and Emmett is the smartest. So if we're talking to aliens, he might know how to speak alienese and we got first contact. Captain, you need to see this. I am not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human-made AI alike. We are not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I do not mean the Reds. It's something we have never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we are going to meet some of them sooner or later. Our, or rather, your life will never be the same, Captain. One of these digital signatures seem familiar, but the message itself is unclear. Perhaps when we get closer to its source, the transmission will clear up. The source is in outer space at least a week from our current position. Crafting completed, new item available, tape. Okay, so yeah, like I said, it's so hard for me to get into this because there's so much going on, but also there's so much shit to read. I feel like I'm reading like a 10 chapter book all in one sentence. Well, that's unexpected, Captain. There's cheese in the pantry. At least, I think it's cheese. I don't know how it got there. Did somebody sneak it on board? Is there an infestation of alien mold? Was it the French? Desperate times call for desperate measures, Captain. We don't know the origin of the mystery cheese. Will you eat it anyway? I wouldn't even eat cheese right now. A little fun fact, everybody. I was breaking out a lot. You probably all saw it from like past videos, but it got a lot better because when I went to my dermatologist, they actually told me if I stop eating dairy, that'll help out a lot. So I'm not touching any cheese in real life or in this game. Captain, we are now entering a field of cosmic gas. Its origin is unknown, though I have a theory. Uh-oh, can you smell that? Did someone forget to brush their teeth today? No, it's just the gas leaking inside the shuttle. Somebody could try to isolate some of the gas to use later, avoiding the leak side effects. So this is now April's time to shine. And I'm also going to give everybody soup because now everybody's hungry. I don't want anyone to die. I'm trying to get a good ending on my first playthrough because everything feels so foreign to me. Unfortunately, April failed at isolating the cosmic gas leak. Are you kidding, April? You had one job. And now my readings indicate that its volume is reaching critical levels. Thank you, April. Everybody give a round of applause for April for doing such a great job. The outcome was less than ideal, but the experience toughened April enough to make her fitting for the role of your science officer. I didn't make her my science officer. Fuck that. Starting tomorrow, she will be procuring useful chemicals for you on a daily basis. I did not agree to that. Hell no. Captain, are you all right? 
Those weird spots on your arm are a little worrisome. Can you see them? Please wait while I search the medical database. Searching. Unfortunately, I am unable to identify your affliction. I'm afraid you will have to diagnose it yourself. I probably have crabs. That shouldn't be too hard. Doctors are overrated. Can you do that, Captain? I can't do that because I don't have the handbook. So I just gotta live with the crabs? Weird spots appeared on your body yesterday. You didn't do anything about it and the situation became much worse. You tried to self-diagnose, but clearly you're not qualified enough to do that. No. What gave it away? No, Captain, for the last time, it's not lupus. Sick leave? On what grounds? Sorry, but this space disease is not even in my database. Take it up with your health insurance provider. I bet if they all had, like, iPhone 15s, iPhone 16s, this shit wouldn't have happened. This computer's dog shit. Captain, I am detecting a troubling buildup of mental tension. Recommending course of action. Throw an epic party. I took the liberty of inviting myself. Invite the entire crew, but of course, the more the merrier, I guess. How about we invite someone new, eh, Captain? Someone you don't know. Or we make ourselves a new companion, yes. How do we do it? I guess the sock puppet? How do I make people go out into space? Wait, expedition's restricted. Oh. I remember, I have to land on a planet, and then I'm gonna be able to go out and do expeditions, but not unless I have that blue vest right there. That's not even a blue vest. That's a purple vest. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. That was a super party, Captain. I loved how you put a sock on your hand yesterday and pretended it's a person. A mysterious Dolores, apparently. You've had quite a lively debate with it, too. Well, desperation breeds unexpected chatmates, doesn't it? Are Didi and Dolores related? They have to be, right? I found it a little weird when you started arguing with the sock and eventually tore it apart. You've got quite a temper, Captain. The most important part is you blew off some steam. Baby's loyal, April's vigorous, and the captain is alert but sick as a dog. Okay, but wait! We landed on the planet because I can see it outside. Or, like, we're near the planet. Captain, wake up! We're approaching some sort of celestial body. It resembles a moon, but I think it's a small planet. Let me run a quick scan. I was right. A small rocky planet with no organic life forms. But there's a lot of movement down there. Strange. My scanners detect a breathable atmosphere, but low in oxygen. Uh, Captain, if you want to land on this planet safely, you will have to fix up a small malfunction with our steering system since we're not even able to turn at the moment. Oh, and you will have to do it before we float away from the planet. Hurry. So I guess I have this lighter... And then, let me see if I can craft anything. We can craft soup. Or we can try to upgrade the armor that we have. So let me do that just in case. Because you don't know if we're going to die. And also, let me give everybody some soup. So we have a full hearty belly. And yeah, the animations here are smooth. I will give it that. And we finally landed on a planet. So hopefully this game gets more interesting. Because right now, we're on Robo Tofu. Goal failed. Investigate the source of the mysterious transmission in outer space. But we landed on an appropriate landing spot. Let me see what my goals are now. Await further instructions. All right. Captain, the expedition module in the back of the cabin has been activated. My advice? Order someone to put the spacesuit on and send them outside. We must learn everything we can about this place. Let the space colonization commence. So let's see. Uh, there's a village. And then there's uh, tourist information. I don't give a shit about tourist information. Let me go to village. And then let me send out baby Bronco. Because he does have the strength and the agility. But he's dumb as a bag of hammers. And also, let me give you the vest. And let me give you the lighter. Just in case it gets dark. And that's it. Okay. Wait. Baby Bronco's hurt? Why? Por qué? Hold on. I need to give baby Bronco that. And then hopefully we don't have to give him a medal of honor. Hopefully he returns. If you're going to send an expedition, why not do it with style? Remember to upgrade your expedition module. Baby left to check out the nearby robotic settlement. Hopefully he won't run into too much trouble. April still remains loyal and Emmett continues to look vigorous. Vigorous better be a good word because I don't know if that means that he hates me or he's happy. Let's repair the statue, I guess. And we received a pamphlet on our window. Try Ebosun. 
Universal shopping from the comfort of your own planet. Free gift with sign up. The Ibosa network lets you order pretty much anything except food and water, and it will arrive via portal within one to two galactic business days. There's a catch though. The account creation process requires you to jump through some hoops. I mean, literally. You have to leap through a string of temporal portals to become verified. The fine print says there's no risk or death or dismemberment, but insanity is possible. How do you want to tackle this? I think since we have a star with the agility, I think we have to tackle it that way. But Emmett's healthy. April's healthy. You're still sick. But I think since we have all adults here, besides baby Bronco, we don't know how old he is. I think that if Dee Dee dies, I think that April and Emmett can still handle their own, right? You touched the floor and quickly sprinted through the Ebosan sign-up portal, disappearing into the dimension breach with a flash of blue lightning. The shuttle rocked and you popped out of the other side of the portal unharmed. The fine print of the pamphlet expanded to show that it would take one to two galactic business days for your verification to process, at which time you could begin your universal shopping experience. The pamphlet then expanded again to define one galactic business day as 520. 25.6 minutes or 1,000 years. Finally, the pamphlet scanned the shuttle to see if you are qualified for the promise free gift and determined you did not. Well, F you then. So basically, we just did that for nothing. Captain, we were able to detect transmissions of unknown origin. Unfortunately, the communications console was damaged during landing and we cannot make anything out of them or reply for that matter. We could hardwire a primitive field communicator to bypass the damaged subsystems and access the shuttle's external transmitter and receiver, whatever floats your boat. I have the phone, so I guess we're going to do that. I actually should have given Dee Dee the med kit, huh? Instead of baby? Whatever. I guess it doesn't really matter. And it's the end. Because Dee Dee died. Wow. I... I need two hands to grab a book? There's no way. There's no way I need two hands to grab a stupid book. But let me get baby. And he requires three hands? Like, come on, no? Let me get you. I haven't got you. Let's do that. Oh, shit, I should have got that backpack. I feel like that could have been useful. Let me just keep getting all the items that I need right here. Oh, my goodness. Let me get that book. Let me get this dude. And the book. Go, 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 go. I'm trying this one more time. Emmett is going to be the guy that I control. Hopefully we get an ending. Let's do this. There's a giant UFO right outside. The distress signal we've been following originated from this little stranded ship. Unfortunately, it only has a skeleton crew. Literally, the pilots are dead. The ship is in standby mode, but could become operational if it had a functioning AI. I could share my base source code with it, but you know, we'd have an undeveloped AI on our hands. I don't know if I'm ready to become a programmer. I don't care. Today's your big day. Let's get to it. I don't remember ever seeing that when I played this originally. Maybe I did, but I forgot about it. And let's see what happened. Redacted son of a glitch. Most of its files are in an alien language, but I think I see the words return and reward. Return Return what? Him, Captain? It's a machine or whatever. Okay, well, at least that got me excited. Captain, where are you, Captain? I can't see you. It appears we've suffered a blackout. You may wish to turn the lights back on before attempting your daily tasks. Okay, let's do the lighter. And then I also want to craft something. Let's get some of that tape. And I really want to get an ending, everybody. If I'm playing this game again in 2023, it's because I'm getting a good ending. So we made the tape. And the system message says, Error, name not found. This baby AI is interesting, I admit. Simple and helpless, much like you. But that will soon change. He's developing at a rate of nearly 400 times that of a typical human. If we're stuck with it for now, maybe stop referring to him as the cute UFO. Think up a name. I'll program it for you. Yes, really, I'm doing it for you. By the way, not for him. So no option has any advantage over the other. So let's go with intelligence because you can never go wrong with intelligence, right? Mm. Oh shit, everybody's starving? Okay, hold on, hold on. Everybody's starving. Oh shoot, I can only feed one person? I guess I'll feed the guy that I'm playing as. Because if everybody else dies, then it doesn't matter. But as we saw with Didi, if the person... What? What is that? She could be the one to my zeros. The signal to my noise. I've been transmitting with an abandoned shuttle I spotted nearby. She has just agreed to meet me. Us. I mean us. 
You have to say yes, Captain. She is drifting and has no crew, so she offered to share her resources. Just one problem. She's a communist. She believes we are too. She blinded me with her thrusters and it just came out. Whoa. She's not a bad shuttle though. She just wants to take pride in the computations we do. If you want her resources, you will have to go along with this. Share a common soup with her. Tell her you're very social and love the party. Please, Captain. I don't have any soup, though. I'm so sorry. This is so awkward. Let me craft up a can of soup because everybody I know is starving. And I guess I have to reject that UFO. I guess we're not getting that outer space ass right now. We're not clapping alien cheeks. I understand why you didn't want to have anything to do with that communist shuttle. I appreciate your integrity, Captain, I do. And it is probably safer that way. It's just, wouldn't you regret not finding about what could have been? All right, whatever. This dude's so horny. While doing a routine cleanup of my database, I came upon a blueprint for a device called the Flux Capacitor. If installed, it might allow us to find our way home. However, it needs to be assembled. Will you try to assemble the Flux Capacitator? Why the Flux not? Why the Flux would I not do that? Let me actually feed baby some soup. And is it one can of soup per person? Because what the Flux is going on? I need to stop saying that. That joke was not funny. Fuck! She died. Okay. Well, this sucks. Your ship, playtime in progress. Playtime? Maybe he's practicing his chess moves. Let's see. Oh no. Captain, you are not to be picked up, even dead ones. Your ship, put that skeleton back in the pilot seat. This young AI doesn't know how to handle organic waste. Interfering with dead crew is disrespectful, but even worse, it's against protocol. We should get those dead aliens out of his cabin ASAP, okay? So this UFO won't leave us alone, so... We just gotta deal with it firsthand. Now I'm going to give Baby Bronco some soup. And then I just crafted another soup. So we're gonna give it to the one eyed monster. I'm talking about the guy that's part of our crew. And there's an alien right outside of our ship. Big ass cone head. Captain, we've stopped moving. And Automaton is tethering us. I'll play his transmission on the main display. Want to do good in the universe? The fluff scales need your help. A picture of an animal, a fluff scale, presumably fills the screen. It's a cross between a wild hog, roadkill, and a snake. The roadkill looks at you expectantly. Since their masters went extinct, fluff scales suffer freedom. Unaccustomed, they are on the verge of dying. Donate soup to the poor fluff scales. All it takes is one can, and I will gratefully let you go. What do we do, Captain? I guess we give you the soup. But then we also need to craft something of our own. I kind of want to give like a med kit to Emmett because he's hurt. He's hurt really bad. And Baby Bronco's weak. And Tom Thompson is starving. Fuck! My crew is in shambles right now. So the automaton gave us 25 energy. And we also got some soup. So let me see what I can do. I can upgrade the first aid kit. So I actually have a first aid kit? Holy shit, I didn't even realize that. Let me craft more soup. And let me see what this is. You can peruse Astro Citizen potential materials when bored, but... Oh no, don't put that on. Captain, you have just initiated the Weight Observer 1000 on your wrist. It's a marketing gadget, cracked and defective. When you look at yourself now, you see a bulky bulldog. It's supposed to motivate you to lose weight. Stop scratching your ear or at least take your shoe off first and do something about this. The ship needs a captain. I guess we're going to use the tape? And then we're going to give Emmett that. And then we're going to give uh, Emmett some soup. And yeah. So it's one can of soup per person. That's wild. So it's not like 25% of the soup uh, gives it to the other people. And then Tom Thompson's dead now. Holy crap. I am definitely not surviving. This game is way harder than I thought. Captain, behind you. A three-headed rusky. Oh, apologies, Captain. I did not predict this routine exercise would make you jump like that and hit your head. It looks bad. You've got red on you. If you have anything to treat the wound with, I strongly suggest you use it. I just used the freaking med kit on Emmett, and now he's hurt again, so I guess I'm going to use some tape. And then also, I feel bad for Baby Bronco holding his stomach like that. Like, the other characters in 60 seconds didn't do that, so you didn't feel that bad. But when they're holding their stomachs like that, it's almost like a feed-me face. 36 days in, bro. I don't even know if I'm close to getting an ending. All right, let me craft some soup, because I've had enough of this. 
You found a couple of rusted and swollen cans of soup in the darkest corner of the ship. Someone must have put them there a long time ago and then completely forgot about them. It doesn't look all that safe to eat, but then again, it's canned soup. It's supposed to last for 737 years. Will you keep the cans? Of course I'm going to keep the cans because I'm desperate. And when you're desperate, you will start doing some desperate things. And this is one of those things. I will eat rusted soup. I don't give a double doggy style damn. But we have three cans now. And oh no, Captain. One of the storage lockers is jammed and cannot be open. It gets worse. It's my favorite locker. We will lose access to some of our supplies if we do nothing, Captain. Also, I will be sad. You need to act. Will you use your brains or bronze to deal with the problem? Let me use my brains because this brain is always on point, I guess. And the cans were good. They were rusted, but they were still good. Unless I get sick. No, I didn't get sick. Okay, now your ship became bigger. It evolved. You hear that whirring? The crafting module is jammed. Your ship tried to use it for something, but he won't tell me for what. Could be making a bomb. Or worse, two bombs? Fix the machine, Captain. Okay, let's fix it. And nobody's hungry. Is this going to get me an ending? Reach personal goals for every Captain? What did I just do? You punch the emergency override code into the crafting module. It's easy. Up, up, down, left, down, right, up, up. The module opened and you found the stuck item. It was a bucket of paint. Black hole black, to be precise. Your ship wanted to give him a paint job. Okay, I'm not talking about any jobs right now. I'm disturbed, Captain. You've reported hearing a child crying somewhere in the shuttle, but my sensors don't show anyone unaccounted for on board. Certainly no stowaway children. This may be an auditory hallucination caused by the stress of witnessing a nuclear war. The other possibility is my sensors are malfunctioning and there really is a stowaway. Search the shuttle? I feel like I vaguely remember this, but I don't know if I'm right. I think that there's gonna be like some kind of robot dog, right? No? You and Baby tried to find the source of the mystery child's cries, even though he couldn't hear them, but after searching every dark corner, I didn't find anyone. Got it. Sir, Baby keeps bashing his forehead off my terminal screen. You ask him to stop, and he explains that he has never been good at reading and is getting frustrated. Apparently, he doesn't even understand some of the signs on the ship. He confesses that he only fell into the Astro Citizen program when he broke into the Astro Citizen training facility while on the lam. Baby never took the entry test. My circuits fizz at the thought. This explains a lot, Captain. Baby says his strength usually got him into trouble and rarely out of it. I fought prison guards. They were wailing on my friend, the old man. A riot kicked off, and I made it out of the camp. Can. You don't know what to say. He asks if you can explain what the stuff on my screen means. What do you think, sir? I think at this point, these two are in it together. So I don't think that baby is going to be a traitor, even though he is a liar. So I'm just going to explain to him everything that's on the screen. He's not going to do anything, right? You agreed to help baby out with his reading skills for a few hours. After a while, you saw a figurative light bulb going off above his head. Oh, he boomed. I only ever use these muscles for hurting. Maybe they be good in helping for once. Okay, bro, stop rhyming right now. Nobody needs that. Well, this night just got interesting. A nightmare wakes you up. As you adjust your eyes to the darkness, you suddenly realize that you are not alone. You can make out a silhouette of a person in the shadows. It's motionless but seems to be staring at you. You can't just ignore it, Captain. What do you do? I guess we shine the lighter in their ugly ass face? I don't know who it could be. At that point, you sleep with a gun under your pillow, and if anybody wakes you up, you start blasting. So it says that you use the lighter and see the mysterious visitor clearly, and believe it or not, your worst nightmare turned out to be a mask hanging on a coat rack. Wow. Captain, I'm picking up a large object of unknown origin not far from us. It's hollow. There could be supplies inside, or maybe even other intelligent life. There's only one way to find out. Should I activate our super fancy tractor beam? Do what you gotta do. Why is this ship following us the entire time? I'm almost 50 days in. I'm balls deep. My balls are resting on this game's forehead, and I haven't even gotten an ending. But we didn't even get any supplies. What's your favorite thing, baby Ask you? This is mine, he said, reaching into his suit collar and producing a little toy superhero branded the Soviet Soccer. He says this was the only toy his parents let him have, and that... When they made him do bad stuff, he'd imagine he was the all-American hero. What's yours? Baby asks again. Captain, he is glancing suspiciously around the cabin. Is he harboring a secret? As far as I know, the only thing you care about right now is the onboard DIY equipment. I guess we'll show him the shovel to his face. There's a space station over there. I think that we're getting close to getting an ending. Reach all the endings 
featuring the UFO. Wait, we got an ending? Fuck yeah, boy! What ending did we get? What was once a speck along the horizon has grown, and it is clear we have arrived at our destination. It is a magnificent alien space station. This must be your ship's home when he was originally constructed. Your ship shuttle your ship reporting for duty. They've cleared us for entry, and we've begun docking. Did you hear how he sounded? Confident. Resourceful. You know where he gets that from, Captain? Me. His old ship. I taught him everything he knows, and don't either of you forget that. Captain, it is my privilege to inform you that you are now officially rescued. Congratulations. Cool. Okay, so we got a space station ending, and these are the homies. These eight-legged freaks, they probably have huge wieners too. And so, your ship found a new home in the space station, and so did Captain Emmett Ellis and his crewmate, Baby Bronco. The UFO graduated with honors from University of Nebulon, and the Astro Citizens were welcomed to the station with open tentacles. They even got a nickname, the Two-Arm Gang. I like that the endings account for the people that died in here. Your ship, the AI, graduated from University of Nebulon at the top of his class and rose through the ranks until he was the operating system for the entire space station. He would spend the rest of his career assisting the captain of the vessel and keeping the aliens alive. If you close your eyes, he sounds almost exactly like his source code, Astro. While neither Baby nor Emmett fully comprehended the nature of the relationship, they both instinctively knew that their fates would be intertwined until the very last star in the universe went out, or until one of them got bored. Megan did not join the Astro Citizen program to make friends, but a friend is exactly what she got. Emmett had to get used to a life without Megan's constant micromanaging. Tom and Captain Ellis had forged an unlikely friendship during this adventure. They really had a good thing going for them, but of course, Tom had to ruin it by dying. Emmett never forgave him for that. Empowered by his incredibly unexpected and successful career as an Astro Citizen Captain, Emmett has found himself wondering what to do next. His brilliant mind was soon put to good use, and only a few short years later, an improved flavor of canned tomato soup was distributed in all of the civilized galaxies. The end. I actually like that. I like that every character had their own little conclusion. I wish that 60 seconds would have something like that. Hopefully, there's a new 60 more seconds game. That would be so dope. I would play the Holy Ghost out of that. But yeah, I love how colorful 60 parsecs is, but that's pretty much where it ends for me. I feel like there was way too much reading. I feel like I was getting overwhelmed with like the crafting and all the items being able to be upgraded. I was kind of like, I want it to be more simple. I kind of like it when it's just like, feed them, give them water, yes or no questions. If you bring items, that's all they're good for. That's all they can do. Like the fact that we could upgrade items in this game, I felt like it was a little too overwhelming for me. And there was way too much text to read, even in a game that relies mostly on text and journal entries notes i feel like it was still a lot for me let me know what you all thought about 60 part sex in the comment section down below hopefully you all enjoyed me playing it though if you did make sure you give this video one big fat like and tell a friend today that jay from the cub scouts is that dude